Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. As you can see, we're in the season to get this tree up, and we just started. We haven't yet got all the decorations on it, but it is that time of the year, time of the year. Most people play Christmas music as well, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone. We look forward to the Christmas season, the wonderful time with family. Well, this is an announcement that for the next few, or actually maybe at least six, possibly eight uh, Adventures in Grace, you're going to hear it over and over again at the beginning of the broadcast. With the busy schedule we've had and all that's getting ready to take place at uh, Christmas time, the holiday season, I'm going to take off just a few of these videos. And we're going to start because it's time again to get into what is Christianity. For some of you that have been following us, we did a pretty extensive series on that a little bit over a year ago. And we're going to bring in for the first five or six videos, maybe a couple of more, we're gonna bring in those videos from over a year ago. And then I'll jump back in and uh, be doing those videos live with you again. We just wanna let you know, this is a great series. And oh, by the way, if you're kinda of tired of this shirt, I am kinda of advertising tonight. Our book is finished. Our book is up on Amazon. We've ordered copies of it. We're gonna get it any day. So people will be able to order from our ministry. It's $10. What's next, Papa? The subtitle is Enjoying Real Experiences with God. And so much of the book has to do with what is Christianity, the series that we're about to do. You can go on Amazon and get it for 15. Uh, right now, the ebook is also available and we'll be getting that link on our uh, website as well. So hey, have a great holiday season. I look forward to being back with you live, but you won't miss anything because the series we did a year ago, we're going to start right out with it. You're going to love every bit of it. Bit of it. We're going to see you soon. Hey, have a wonderful holiday season and send in your grace stories to jhmi at jimhockaday.com. We want to be flooded with grace stories in this holiday season. So many opportunities to get with people, to be around uh, circumstances where you need to lean on grace instead of leaning on your flesh, where you need to look for the influence of God because he's everywhere. Thank God Jesus is the reason for the season. Bless you guys. Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday looking forward to getting back into our series on what is Christianity. Pretty big topic, isn't it? I trust you've been enjoying them so far. I've heard quite a few comments. Uh, people have really been enjoying the material. And I've heard a lot of comments of the testimonies and the experiences that people are beginning to have. We'll share some more of that. In fact, I'll get right into one that just starts right away with the whole idea of Adventures in Grace and why we're doing these videos on YouTube. And of course, bring people to the videos. Tell them to subscribe. Uh, on one hand, we really don't care about numbers at all. On the other hand, I care about how many people are starting to experience God. Therefore, maybe there's a whole lot more that could as well. Listen to this. Uh, this is really good from Terry. It said, we just want to say we are loving your Adventures in Grace YouTube channel. We've watched every one of them. Wow, that's, that's a lot. We inhale them every time they come out. <laughs> that's a fun way of saying it. The Imagination Series is bringing so much light to us. How we view the miracles we are looking at. We are turning more light on and into our situation. Also, loved watching the series, uh, the three services in Craig, Colorado. What's Next Papa is ringing in us. More realities, yesterday, today, and forever. More is clicking as we watch you. God wants us to have it and experience it today. Thank you, Dave and Terry. Well, I really appreciate that. It's simple, but yet just to the real heart of the issue that people are watching these and beginning to recognize the difference of reality. You know, years ago, we did a Bible study for five years called What is Reality? And actually, those sermons that have so much to do with the time that I spent on the ranch with my friend B.J. Rickard, who went home to be with the Lord, uh, all the things that I've learned, you know, concerning the time at Ramah, uh, in the prayer school, and the healing school, traveling with Brother Hagen. These things combined, bringing them together, helped to actually open my heart and mind to the idea of more. Now, I know 
you want more. You wouldn't be listening if you didn't. You want God to be real to you. You wouldn't be listening if you didn't. So we're so thankful for what the Lord is beginning to do in the hearts and lives of people that are watching. And for that very reason, we want to share with you. Number one, we want God to come out of the pages of the Bible, your Bible, and get into your life. That's so, so important that the favor that is in this world, we just came from meetings called Favor, um, let's see, Favor Fest. I really messed it up on the advertisement. I said Oktoberfest, but they didn't change it. So I guess it was all right. Maybe people recognized, maybe they didn't. It was Favor Fest. And the favor of God in the dispensation of grace, Ephesians 2, 3, 2, the dispensation of grace. This is a time of God's favor upon the whole world for those that would receive him because God is not mad at you. God has removed your sin, removed your penalties and your punishment so that you can come to him freely and experience him immediately, all day long, every day. It's so, so wonderful for us to have God in our lives. And that's different. Let me say for me, it's different than the many years I've said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm wanting to thank him, but I, but I don't really have it tied to a specific event. I'm just thanking him. And that's nothing wrong with that. But why not thank the Lord for a testimony. Thank him for his involvement in something that shows that God really was there and he did something tremendous and wonderful. This is what we're wanting for you. Number two, your faith is so much easier when it's attached to reality. And the more real God becomes, the easier it is to get your prayers answered. And number three, that you might share those testimonies with other people. Well, as you know, Starting right here, Matthew 11, 27 to 30 in the Message Bible is where we always go to for our reference. It's our scripture for adventures in grace. And in the Message Bible, it says, and Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. <clears throat> the Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping them to myself. I'm ready to go over them line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Aren't you so thankful for the way that the Lord begins to show himself to us on a regular basis and invites us to be a part of the relationship that we have been for so many years in such awe as we look through the Gospels and see what Jesus did in three and a half years the miracle signs and wonders, the way that he walked in such boldness and confidence, the way that he loved the people, didn't bring condemnation, but was always bringing people into a relationship, into a feeling of acceptance. Aren't you thankful that the Lord loves us today? And the ministry of reconciliation, uh, 2 Corinthians in chapter 5, toward the end of the chapter there, 19 through 21, that ministry of reconciliation is to let people know that God's not mad at you. He actually has removed the sin of the world. He's reconciled you, the whole world, to himself. Reconciliation, it's an accounting term. If you reconcile your account, maybe that's something people don't actually do too much anymore. But we actually had to learn how to do that. That means you find out all your extend, outstanding checks and, and different things that have not yet cleared your account. Because it may look like you've got a lot, but maybe you don't have as much. What God did is he settled our accounts he zero balanced them. He removed all of our depravity and sin and iniquity and gave us his peace and his love and his joy and his acceptance. And thank God he gave us his righteousness. So today we enter into this new video with a lot of joy in our hearts that we have a tremendous relationship and a God who wants to have more with us as I want to have more with him. More meaning what? more tangibility, more experience, more of the knowledge of God, more of hearing him and seeing him and working with him, more of God just influencing everything I do, my thought patterns so that my desires line up with his desires, my will so that my will aligns up with his desires. 
You know, God wants to give us and create in you power and desire to do of his good pleasure and delight. That means he wants to give you the right desire and the ability to, uh, to perform or to work that desire so that it meets up with his will. Is that because God's just, you know, wanting to lord over us his will? No, his will is the most beneficial uh, life that we could live. And so he wants his will in our life because his will is for amazing experiences with him on such a regular basis all the time. Well, we're back in Colorado, as you can see, and we're trying out a new background. Let us know if you like it. You know, we've been doing that black background. I thought I really liked it, but I asked people, and I'll ask you. You could send in, you know, your reply. I have no problem when I ask if you say, you know, Jim, the black background was the most horrible thing that could, you could have ever done. You made us suffer through, you know, 40 videos. Oh, my goodness. Didn't you know any better? I don't even care if you, you're that blunt. I just want you to know that we asked some people about it that really love watching Adventures in Grace to the point where they would say, it doesn't matter what background there is. We just love the content. But I was at Newtown, Connecticut, as you know, doing meetings last week, and I did some Adventures in Grace, two of them in Pastor Adam's office that had a whole bunch of windows. And people really loved the, the, the windows, the brightness, uh, not the fake light, you know, with the different uh, things that we use to help bring, bring brightness, but just the daytime light. So we're doing that again. Let us know if you like it. So here we are talking, of course, and, and we left off with, I think, a really great example. So with my relationship with, with Aaron in the home, of course, when we had kids, there was so much more distraction. You were listening to lots of voices three little girls in my life, and then we had a couple of dogs. You were listening to a lot. So even if you were focused in on something, you still had to actually keep your ears open in case there was a need. You could hear something, you immediately respond to it. Well, that's only respectful in a relationship, and especially when Erin and I are here home alone. You know, if she says something, I, I just don't want to assume she's talking to herself, so I'll say something like, Erin, uh, did you say something to me, hon? Did you say something? And sometimes it comes back, no, I was talking to myself. Other times, yes, did you not hear what I said? And I say, no, I was actually listening here, but I did hear you. So say that again, please. Well, that's just mutual respect. And, and if she's here, then I want to stay alert to the fact that she is here. And if we're not on purpose interacting and we're doing different things, then at any time we might interact. And that comes with the things that I see or the things that I hear. Well, the same is true with your relationship with God. Now, here's the awesome part. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Is that like bingo? Awesome. Because that means God is with you at all times. So the potential for interaction is there always. Now, I looked into the life of Jesus and I thought, you know, if Jesus is going to interact with me, let me look into his life and see if he actually did anything. Because if he was a couch potato <laughs> for three and a half years, come on, would you be thinking like at all times, even though he's right across from you, that you're going to interact with him? No, not too much, probably you know, he's not saying too much. He's distracted. He's looking maybe at the TV. He's just not doing too much. But if you look into the scriptures and you see that Jesus was constantly interacting with his father, and as a result, the miracle signs and wonders, and even John said in his last chapter, if we could bring all the books together and then look at all the things Jesus did, those books could not contain the numerous miracle signs and wonders that Jesus did in just three and a half years. Think of that. Well, if that's the kind of activity that Jesus is seen for in the scriptures and he's with me at all times, then what would that say that I'd probably want to be alert and aware a lot, which would mean I could have multiple, multiple experiences with the Lord, even as small as they might be, interactions with God all day long that would amount to, come on, help me with this, that would amount to tangibility, becoming very aware of him becoming really good at listening to him, become, becoming really sharp and defined at seeing him. And then my heart's like rejoicing all the time, saying, thank you, Lord, or thank you, Grace, for another Grace experience. And why would I be saying thank you? Because I'm hoping to get one? Because I just had multiple experiences with him. 
I know 12 minutes has already gone by, but this is so, so good. As I take you over to John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, and Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. And speaking to her there, he says many amazing things. <clears throat> but one of the things that he begins to engage her in is she begins to realize that it, it must be this prophet who's talking to me. In the Message Bible 23, Jesus said, It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Now, obviously the way you live includes, we obviously don't want to be, I said that twice, obviously, third time. We don't want to be involved in sin. We don't want to be like, like just going hard for sin, you know, taking a right-hand path to the wrong way or a left-hand path to the wrong way. You know, in, in the last part, the latter part of chapter 6 of Romans, Paul, after identifying us with Christ, he says, so what does this mean? You can just go ahead and sin anytime you want to. And then he said, well, God forbid. And why did he say God forbid? Well, because if that's the way you think about life, you'll get trapped in that sin and you'll no longer be free to experience the Lord. Is it because the Lord just doesn't like you anymore? No, he loves you at all times. He's removed all your sin so that he can fellowship with you even if you have sinned. But what happens is it taints the way that you look at yourself and the way that yourself looks at how you're supposed to relate to him. So God doesn't want you attached to sin. It'll just drag you right on down and beat your brains in and make you feel so bad about yourself and your relationship gets tainted. So when he says this, it's who you are and the way you live. Yes, it includes that. But really what he's trying to say here, it's about being so honest and simple-minded in yourself towards God. It's the way you perceive reality. It's the choices that you make. Yes, we're, we're going to get more specific with this and we'll include this. When we talk about how you do life is how you do faith. And if your faith isn't working, it goes back to how you do life. We'll talk about that. Maybe even our next video. I don't know. But it does include that, which is, what is reality to you? Why did you just make the choice you made? Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? How are we, why are you fretting? I have moments like that. You know, I, I have to be real careful because I've, I've been all my life a reactive person. You touch me, I, I hit back. Something happens, I respond. Well, in, in many cases, that's really good because I can usually solve problems. But it doesn't mean the way that I'm solving them is good. I could be all involved in anxiety and fretting and fearful and, and then mouthing off and saying things I wish I didn't say. And So what about the peace and the calm and the realizing God is just with you at all times and grace is with you, so why in the world would you get upset? To devalue what's going on around you is only to give God more value and make him real. Well, that is exactly where my focus is, is just hanging out with him so that that kind of experience in my life becomes the norm. Amen. And not reacting the wrong way, but reacting the right way. So you ask yourself the question, why did you react? Why did you say that? Why did you do that? That's your reality. You can fight against it, but that must be what you really believe because that's how you responded. So he said this, it's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. Does that mean your worship cannot engage your spirit or it doesn't always engage your spirit? Can you mentally be wor worshiping God out of the intellectual realm of knowing that it's what you're supposed to do and not allow your heart to enter, enter in? Well, I would say it like this. If you're not used to checking in with your heart for anything, then most likely what you do are, or the patterns that you've actually established are, you probably worship and do your Christian life intellectually. Don't we want to do it out of our heart, out of our spirit? Isn't this what Paul, Jesus is saying to the woman? And, and he goes on to say, that's the kind of people the Father is out looking for, those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. Simply and honestly themselves. It sounds like another passage of scripture, and I've got just enough time for this. Matthew 6, 6 in the message, it says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play. In other words, put on something that's fake, that's not really your heart. 
And then it says, just be there as simply and honestly as you can imagine. There's those two thoughts again, simply and honestly. In other words, the more real you are to you and to God, the more effective your interaction with him will be. That's a really good statement. It says here, the focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. You want the focus to shift from you. You want it to shift to God and you want to begin to allow your senses to become open and aware of spiritual things where the grace of God is real to you. I love this right here as I finish. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship must worship out of their very being, their spirit, their true selves in adoration. I want you to think about that until we come back next time and touch on that just briefly and then go further. Wow, it's so good to be with you in our Adventures in Grace videos. We want you just to excel and experience God throughout the course of your day. Let what we've shared today encourage that as you become simple in your heart and mind. Well, go to Adventures in Grace YouTube channel and subscribe. Bring people there with you. Get them to subscribe. Listen to these videos like the testimony we had with Dave and Terry. And then you can go to Jim Hockaday Ministry Facebook page and follow us. But by all means, please... Go to our website, jimhockaday.com, and find our email, jhmi at jimhockaday.com, and send us your grace story. God bless you. Until next time.